SMX Facts Time, but without our man Clinton Fowler, who is under the weather this week. Hopefully he rejoins us in the booth, though, for the Salt Lake City race. But he did give us some data. So JT and I will break this down. And the reason that Jet Lawrence is on the cusp of the championship is not just the point lead that he has. It's because he has conquered Clinton Fowler's statistical five keys to a championship, which is starts, speed, passing, limiting the mistakes, and winning races. And in most of those categories, Jet is aces. But JT, the one you really want to hammer on is starts. It has been very feast or famine. But overall, Jet is the best gate pick, meaning qualifying and heat race uh, position for the main event. 3.6. Uh, he's lined up the furthest to the inside, averaging the seventh gate. That's seventh from the inside. And he has the most hole shots and the best position crossing the white stripe hole shot line at an average of 5.8. And those numbers don't lie, right? Because we've essentially seen when Jet gets a start, he's fine. When he doesn't, that's the only time we've seen cracks. Yeah, it's, it's really been the common denominator of any struggles that he's had this year. You know, San Francisco in the mud, okay, different, a little bit different dynamic there, but his terrible start in San Diego, he had to work up from the back. Anaheim two, he gets into trouble crashes in, in race one because of a poor start. Just go through the season every time that he had a struggle or there was some sort of opening for another rider, a poor start was the, kind of the start, for lack of a better word, of that problem. So uh, yeah, this is really it. You know, if you're asking Cooper Webb, you're asking Eli Tomek, how do we get to Jet Lawrence? How are we gonna beat him? Having him start mid-pack is, is probably the first words that are gonna come out of their mouth. Yep, and that's not just key for the title, that could be key for how the race plays out this Saturday in the 450 division. Now, if Jet does win this title, and again, he's got a really big point lead with only one round to go, he'd become only the third rookie to win this championship. Jeremy McGrath dominated with 10 wins in the 1993 season as a rookie. And then Ryan Dungey won the title in 2010. And that's where we really want to drill down here. The comparison to McGrath had a absolutely dominant season in 93, so much so, that most of his primary, we thought would be rivals, were soon retiring in the wake of his dominance. Dungey was different. The next year, all of his competitors were back and it led to an epic 2011 championship. Ryan Villapoto, Chad Reed, James Stewart, Trey Kennard, you name it. So JT, compare and contrast the Dungey, McGrath, and potential Lawrence rookie championships. Well, you know, McGrath had more wins. You know, Dungey had six wins in that 2010 championship. So there's a little bit of a difference in the data there. Jet's going to have more than that, of course. But I'm going to use something here that would drive someone like Clint Fowler, who likes to use numbers, crazy. I'm going to talk about perception. How does this feel? How does this, what do we think about this? And I think everybody leaving that first championship season for Jeremy McGrath felt like, uh-oh, we have just unlocked something. This guy just uncorked a change in the sport. I didn't necessarily feel that with Ryan Dungey in 2010. I was out there racing alongside him. I knew he was great, but I didn't have the feeling that he was going to take over and dominate the sport for the next extended period of time. There were still champions. You know, James Stewart was still there. Chad Reed was still there. Ryan Villapoto was in that championship fight until he got injured in St. Louis. Dungey was your deserving champion. It just didn't have the same feeling as it did with McGrath. So transitioning to Jet, I have that McGrath feeling. I, I really feel like Jet is on the precipice of going on a run here. Nothing is guaranteed, but I would I would really say this is more McGrath-like first championship than it is Dungey. I just don't see how these other riders are going to be able to respond year in and year out and keep Jet from winning championships because the kicker here for me is remember, Ryan Dungey lost four consecutive Supercross championships after that 2010 season. You're going to tell me that Jet Lawrence is going to lose four in a row from here? Let me know where to place a wager on that because I just can't see it, Weege. Yes, and Jeremy McGrath won 93, and then 94, and the title at 95, and the title in 96. It definitely feels more like that because here's the real problem. We mentioned the starts and some of the mistakes that Jet has made. Every time he makes a mistake, what do we call it, JT? Rookie mistakes. I think all those other riders on the gate know He's probably just going to get better over the next two or three or four years. And that is a scary proposition for them. And I agree. 
I don't think there was fear if you if you put the truth serum to Chad Reed and James Stewart at the end of 2010 and said, are you scared of Ryan Dungey? They said, no, nah, we just got hurt. We'll take our shots at him in 2011. It's going to be tough on these guys next year if Jet Lawrence can stay healthy. And I will punctuate it with this. McGrath wasn't the motocross champion in his rookie year, only the supercross champion. Jet Lawrence is trying to be both, and he's only 20 years old. So there's your data, everybody. Okay, we are moving on to Salt Lake City and the Monster Energy Supercross finale. As mentioned, racing will start at 8 Eastern, but there will be a pre-race show to preview what we're going to call Championship Saturday with all these titles on the line. The preview show is 7.30 Eastern. You can watch on Peacock or the SMX Video Pass Racing Again at 8 Eastern. It will also air on USA Network on Linear Television. And then again, 2 o'clock Eastern on NBC on Sunday. And don't forget to go over to the Telemundo YouTube channel and just sample the Spanish language broadcast as well. That's how to watch. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.